All right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about how to graph parametric equations, okay? So let's take, for example, x equals cosine t and y equals sine t, right? These, these set of parametric equations. Now, remember back from beginner trigonometry where you use the unit circle, right? Let's draw the unit circle here. Decent circle. All right, so the coordinates for any point on this circle, if you remember right, was to be cosine theta comma sine theta, okay? And basically, right, you're using parametric equations here, okay? It, hopefully you, you remember that, right? Your x was cosine theta, right? That's what we have up here, right? We just changed the theta to a t. And we also have y equal to sine of theta, right? Which is what we have up here. So these set of parametric equations are defining the unit circle, okay? And we'll see how that works in just a second here. All right, so here's how you want to write the table if you're going to use a you know table for graphing parametric equations, which I recommend. Okay, so now we have an extra column which is going to be the time values, right? Our our parameter t. Okay, so I have a couple different uh, angles in here that we are going to work with, right? We have uh, pi over four. So what happens when we plug in pi over four for cosine and sine, right? Well, the cosine of pi over 4 is just rad 2 over 2. So x is going to be rad 2 over 2 when t is pi over 4. And that's going to be the same thing for y because the sine of pi over 4 is also going to be rad 2 over 2. Okay, let's plot that point. So we know, okay, we have a x of rad 2 over 2. Let's say that's right here. We have a y of rad 2 over 2. Let's call that here. Okay, so about right here. Okay, so what about pi over 2? Well, if we have the cosine of pi over 2, right, that's 90 degrees, that's just going to be 0, right? So x is going to be 0 when t is pi over 2. Now, what about for y? Well, y is the sine of pi over 2, and that we know is 1. So pi over 2 is going to look something like this, right? Now, what about 3 pi over 4? Okay, this is 135 degrees. So, when we plug in cosine uh, of 3 pi over 4, right, that's going to give us a negative rad 2 over 2. And sine of 3 pi over 4, right, sine is positive in the second quadrant, so you're going to get rad 2 over 2. So, if we graph this point, it's going to be right about, say, here. Right, and what about pi, okay? So cosine of pi, right, we know that's negative one, and sine of pi, we know that is zero. So we're gonna have negative one comma zero. So that's gonna be more over here. All right, so you can already start to see that, that circle start to form, okay? So we're gonna be going kind of like this, and around, right, yeah. That's, that's about as good as I can do for trying to circle, I guess. I don't know. So now the last thing that we need to do is we need to give this a direction, right? We need to give this a direction because time is only going in one direction, okay? So as time increases, which way were we going around this unit circle? Well, remember, this was pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. So we were as we were increasing time, we were going counterclockwise. So we can give it this direction. All right, and that now is a completed graph. All right, so we have one more example up on the board here. Okay, this time we're going to go from negative 3 to 3. And we have our parametric equations up here, okay? Go ahead and try to fill out this table right now so, you know, you're comfortable with, you know, filling it out, just graphing parametric equations. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Now we have x equal to t cubed plus t, right? So we're going to have a negative 30 here, okay, because negative 3, we have that cube, that's 27, well, negative 27, and then we're going to have minus 3, which gives us negative 30, okay? Now, what about for y? Well, that's just going to be 9 plus 2, so that's 11. For t equals negative 2, if we plug in a negative 2 here, that means that we get a negative 8, 
and that's going to be minus 2, so we're going to get negative 10. For y, if we plug in negative 2 for t, we get 6. For negative 1, we get a, it's going to be negative 1 minus 1, so it's a negative 2. And for y, we're going to get 3. For 0, we would just end up with 0 for x and 2 for y. For 1, we'll have 2 for x and should be yep, 3 for y. And you can kind of see that we're going to start getting, you know, 2, 3, this will be 6 and 11, right? It starts to kind of look like, uh, like a parabola. Now, for 2 here, what are we going to get? Uh, well, we would have 10 here, and we would have also 30 here. Okay, so it kind of starts to look a little parabolic with the, with the chart, okay? So now graphing this. We have negative 30 comma 11. That's going to be way out here. And we can kind of put it up, right? And then we have negative 10 comma 6. You can draw that like right here. Okay, and then we have negative 2 comma 3. It's going to be much closer. We have a 0 comma 2. And then that's just going to be reflected on the other side. So we'll have something like this. Here. So now we need to give this graph direction, okay? So as time increased, which way did we go on this curve? Well, as time increased, we ended up going this way, right? We had, let's, let's say from negative three to negative two, this was our, neg our time equals negative three point, this was our time equals negative two point. So as time increases, we're gonna go this way. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for Parametric and Polar in the next video in the series. See you soon.